Hello. We all these days think that modern man has invented so many great advances in medicine, health care in general, and that we've solved so many diseases, uh, and we have longer lifespans than ever. Statisticians for life insurance companies tell us perhaps that we have a lifespan we can count on of about 79 years of age. But I have a question that pops up more and more regularly these days now that I'm 61. And that is, um, to have a lifespan, don't you have to have been born and then live? You have to be alive for a while, right? So, of course, everybody listening to this, anyone reading anything would naturally say, well, I'm alive, I was born. But there are those who say that um, we have childhoods that, as time goes by, kind of get stopped up. And we lose our childhood while we're still children. This is not a foreign idea to uh, mankind. The famous actor Anthony Hopkins has said before in videos that he thinks many people are zombies uh, from mid-childhood on. Uh, there are are other people too, some Buddhists, for instance, who believe much of mankind is asleep. Well, I don't believe we were born that way. We tended to express our emotions, feel things much more deeply in early childhood, I think, uh, than later childhood, especially in certain countries and eras. Then there's the philosopher or some would say religious uh, um, person deeply, Gurdjieff. I think he was born around 1860 uh, in Russia. And he has said before that most of mankind is asleep. Um, and he was not particularly a Buddhist, but he had also said that from a philosophical perspective. And these days, we are a highly medicalized people, I think. Uh, America is in a three-way tie for first place, for instance, in the number of people who take antidepressants per capita. And it's said that one-third of American women take an antidepressant also. What would be the definition of being depressed? Some would say simply to be bummed out. Others would say to have no hope anymore. Of course, what would hope mean then in turn? I think it would mean hope of change. Hope eventually of breaking free of some things that made us uh, rather asleep in the first place. If we're going to assume many had this happened to them by hook or crook in mid-childhood say. Now, of course, um, it's not just a matter of antidepressants that many people these days take, especially in America, but a variety of what they call minor and major tranquilizers. Uh, many smoke marijuana, use, what, CBD pills or other. Uh, then there are those who use more toxic to the body type substances, whether alcohol, meth, fentanyl, heroin, cocaine, and so on. And all of these are just the chemical-based, uh, I would say, distractors or defense mechanisms or coping mechanisms in general. And they all have a dulling effect on us, I believe, to um, dull certain emotions. And then, again, makes me wonder, how awake are we? And if we're not very awake, 
how can we speculate about what our lifespan is going to be if our life is rather um, a questionable existence already? Maybe we died technically in mid-childhood. And it seems rather odd to me then to speculate about whether we're going to live to 60, 70, 80, 90 or more. If we already died or quasi died at 15 or 12. There's the name that pops into my head, Karen Ann Quinlan. There was, I believe, a court case. I would have to look the details up, but she was either on life support, brain dead, or both. And um, there was the question, what to do about it? Well, I wonder if many of us, especially in the modern age, are Karen Ann Quinlan's also, to a significant extent, brain dead since mid-childhood. And so, ironically though, uh, it's marketed to us the idea that we're fully alive because of all we have materially, all the kinds of experiences we can have just by hopping on a plane or boat or in your car. Who knows? But are we Karen Ann Quinlan's, all too many of us? And it's marketed to us that this is not the case. So if this is in fact the case that so many of us have brains that are rather shut down or functioning at a minimal level compared to what they could be and what they typically might have been earlier in our childhood, how does this um, play out in our lives then? What is causing our brains to be so taxed, so shut down, to the point that maybe it's uh, compounded by our using substances, chemical in nature or other? Well, I know one man who got me thinking of this once, Noah Elkreef. Um, and he has said that he urges people to seek serenity in life. And I thought about that at the time, five years ago, and then didn't give it that much thought per se, but I think what he was particularly talking about is a concept that um, psychologists talk of in America, but the Buddhists talk of it even more. And some, in fact, would say that to be, quote, enlightened, which I have a question of uh, as being something uh, of an all or nothing thing, so questionable, but at the same time, the concept being put out that to the degree we have fears, we're unenlightened whatever you would define unlightened be, to be. But Noah Alcrief was pointing at the concept of fears as taking away our serenity. And maybe he mentioned also anger. And I would say rage is a stronger form of uh, anger on a continuum. And how chronic it is, too. Not just um, periodic, say, or if it's stuffed in us all the time, too, that's no good either. And perhaps there's much talk, too, of shame, depending on what family you grew up in and what environment um, in general. But I believe maybe shame is a, a type of uh, chronic fear. And the same would go for so many other factors we might call, what, uh, perfectionism obsessive compulsive disorder, if you will, um, or catastrophizing, um, and that sort of thing. Some would say, what, PTSD, fear that something you suffered in the past you called traumatic could happen again. Or maybe we fear something that could happen in the future to us that hasn't uh, because we see it hap having happened to someone else or it was on the news. I know too, a, um, surely a form of uh, taking away from this idea of serenity or not being brain dead uh, or numbed is the matter of quote-unquote depression. No hope 
no feeling that one can grow, no feeling that one can find somebody to help us, some person, some book, some religion, some new relationship, some new job, some new career, some new location to live in, or even country, or maybe even taking up the RV way of life. Who knows? Some new hobby, on and on. Um, I know, too, many of us claim we have insufficient time, and our lives are too chaotic, things cost too much, we have noxious bosses, partners, sometimes children who've strayed for whatever reason, and um, those become sp specific issues of concern, too. Even the media we watch, whether news uh, or reading papers, certain books, Hollywood productions, TV in general and movies, surely these tax us greatly. And yet we don't seem to be able to climb out of the rabbit hole very easily. And sadly, in my opinion, all the more so if we're told it's simply a biological issue in our brains, uh, neurochemical or structural, or that it, there's a significant component to this. And um, then instead of asking ourselves over and over and over, well, what's wrong with my thinking or my environment or both? Maybe we spend way too much time saying, well, there must be a significant genetic component that's not overcomable, and so I'm not going to delve into these other questions too much. In the meanwhile, I'll simply take some pills that will try and neutralize this, quote, disadvantage, and um, see what happens. And I think that all too often shuts down our brain, numbs us, and then we can't even think and experience much anymore to try and fix anything. I think some of the most healing experiences we can have to try and uh, climb out of this rabbit hole have to do with nature. And I'm not talking um, what I used to do when I was in my 20s in the Sierra Club, and that is hop in a car, go a half an hour, and join a group of 20 people, uh, or go in nature and um, carry your boombox with you, either a big one or a tiny one with um, earbuds, shall we say. To me, um, that's um, not too much nature. I like the phrase uh, that we would want to unplug. And uh, I'll leave it to you to uh, ask, well, unplug from what? I know it has helped me considerably to unplug in stages from um, very aggressive TB programming I used to watch 20 years ago and then less and less, until at some point in time, um, I did not own a TV anymore. And um, also, when I lived with somebody who had cable TV, uh, there reached a point when we no longer subscribed to cable TV. So that was a form of unplugging. Um, in a sense, then, that's what nature does if we do it right, the, the optimal way to get its uh, maximal benefits. I think, in a sense, too, we do that when we say, oh, I need a vacation. Uh, well, as long as we don't come back more frazzled than when we left, because it wasn't all too often much of a vacation, but a big stimulus package, just a different kind of stimuli than uh, what we normally had. So that kind of takes the edge off of boredom, perhaps. But that was kind of the opposite of uh, what I'd say is nature. I'd close by saying, well, surely many of us say, well, this sounds all too good and true, but why don't more of us do it? Or why does it take so long to come to our senses? And start to make moves in this direction. I think, um, I remember seeing a movie once with um, Mr. Borgnine, I think his name was, 
what, back in the 1950s, and he was on a farm. I believe he had a niece come. She was probably a teenager. She stayed six months, six weeks, I mean, <laughs> six hours, upon which she said to him, I can't take it anymore here out in the country. i got to go back to my uh, city. Why? For the same reason why, what, uh, 10, 15 years ago, I tried doing some meditation. And after five minutes, I couldn't do it anymore. I couldn't, what they say, be alone with my thoughts in a room for more than five minutes. I wasn't playing meditative music, by the way. Um, and Albert Camus, a philosopher, was one person who coined this phrase, but the general gist is um, that to ease into too few distractions at one point in time probably is too disturbing for many of us, and um, we flee back to our normal distractive lives. Uh, but this is not a foreign concept, and there are others who have brought it up too. It has to be eased into, though, of course, because we have our inner demons, so to speak. Not of this sense I'm talking uh, of a uh, cult nature, but thoughts. Thoughts from our past and um, fears about future, too. What could be repeated or what could happen. So this counters, then, our seeking serenity by being alone. It's kind of a um, catch-22, then. Not easy to solve, especially with all the, quote, marketing in our lives. As to how good we have it, and if we don't have it so good, our brains must be semi-broken, and that's um, just the way the cookie crumbles, I guess. That's what we're told. But I have to wonder, I really do, it doesn't, doesn't add up to me. And my life has played out much differently as the years have clicked by. So I don't buy all that I've been told as to how good we have it and how wonderful it is we're going to live to 79 on average. When I know for many of my years of life, I know I was a very unhappy person, technically dead, because I was so fearful, so chronically angry. Uh, what, 10 years ago, in fact, I tried licking this anger issue by keeping an anger journal, anger notebooks, more than one, stuffed full of comments, chronic anger. This took much work, much time. I came to the point where this chronic anger was, what, 99% gone permanently, but it was not easy. And um, there's no such thing as perfection, but the underlying thoughts, the underlying premises got eventually corrected to the point where this chronic anger was bye-bye. And to me, that was to start living again since uh, when I was, what, six, ten years old. And then um, after that point in time, life became uh, not so happy. So I would just urge all of us to think that um, there's hope in change. Uh, it isn't easy, but I love the phrase, it ain't over till the fat lady sings, that has sustained me earlier in life especially, so many times. So once again, to recap, I would say, um, it's wonderful the things we have that are pluses in modern day and age, but I have to question this concept called living versus dying. It's just a um, big all or nothing thing. How can we be alive if we're Karen Ann Quinlan-like brain dead by way of chronic anger uh, and fears. Seems to me, and that on top being drugged away or um, experienced away or living in a chaotic environment away, 
seems to me that's a rather um, premature death. And um, so this has been, of course, written upon before. And uh, I could expound upon some of the books I've read or seen. But um, it's up to each of us, of course, to, I think, trust what we see and think sometimes quite a bit more than what we hear or are told in general, what we read. Uh, I wish you well. <laughs>